Hello, today is the uh, 25th of September, 2012. Welcome to today's uh, Silver Update. When the week started, the uh, movements uh, had a fairly volatile short-term move that occurred on Sunday night or just after midnight in the Greenwich time. As it was five minutes going down from about uh, 34.28 down to about 33.56, and of course, the majority of it occurred within the last minute, where it was a little bit, bit above 34, again down to the 33.56, and it ended the minute at around 33.82. So, extreme volatile movements. Now, what I said before on the opposite movements, which is pretty much the same, is when you have that big up move, and then you come back and you end up consolidating right afterwards, which is the exact opposite here. Then on the up move, you would go long. On this situation, it would be a short. However, if you had have went short in here, that would have all depend on how you played because it did not, as of yet, reach this last low. But it, it did manage to go lower that day in towards the 3360 range. So it could have been that of a winning wager. Let's look at what we're seeing today on the daily chart. And this is what we're seeing a lot more of this uh, sideways congestion. And if this thing ends up breaking lower with more of a confirmation move below in here, then these would be the next two uh, significant support levels at 3280. And as well, below that, at 31.40. So we'll take a look at this on the three-hour time frame to get a better idea within this. And quite frankly, the big significant levels, you got point, I got point A to point B. I was originally using here, but I'm going to use this one instead. And it's been holding up okay right now above this significant level. So basically, the 61.8% Fibonacci, which I'm not going to show, from here to here. If it looks as if it's, and it's going to be somewhere around here. If it uh, confirms that it's going to be breaking out above that, then I'd be looking for the movements to continue the uptrend and then test within the high 35s into the 36 level. But with that being said, if, uh, if I notice the price action is holding and stand below 34 for more than two or three hours, then I'm going to be putting my bias towards having that test of either one of those two significant Fib levels, Fib levels, levels here at uh, 32.80 and 31.40. Now there's multiple ways of checking if things are failed moves from point A to point B, and I've been using the Fibonacci retracement but there is another way that works very well too and that is a running average so if you were to say draw a running average from in here as long as this uh, average would be in an uptrend so would the market be and it is obviously in that of an uptrend and what we're going to do is take a look at the volume not volume weight average but the running price from this high then later we'll do it from this low but for today, we're going to do it from this high, and we're going to use the raw data. The more information box gives me, there's a folder that I use which has the data and uh, charts that I'm using. So what we're going to do is take a look at uh, the average price since the 2011 high. So we're going to take this data. This is silver hourly from 2011. We'll select everything in there. And we'll open up a spreadsheet, and we'll paste it into the spreadsheet, and we're going to figure out how the uh, running average price is working. And we need 2012 data as well. So there's all of 2011's hourly data. And now let's uh, pick up the 2012 data. And paste it in here again. All right, so we'll delete these rows, which we don't need. And there we have it. We have data all the way up to today at uh, 
1400 Greenwich time. So we need to find the high which occurred at the end of April of 2011. We're looking for the 4980 high which is right here. So what we need to do is we need to find the average price from this time frame. So what I'll do in the spreadsheet is click on equals average. And I'm going to want the average of the highs, the lows, and the closes up to, of course, the top. Now I'm going to be copying this lower, but what I'm going to be needing is everything from this point on. So I can put in a dollar sign beside the 1946, which is the cell that contains the 4980, and it will thus give me the running average the rest of the way. And we'll draw a line chart, but what we'll need to do is we'll need to uh, find out the swing line highs and lows. And to do that, what I will do is I will ask them a question. Equals, or we'll, we'll not ask a question, we, we'll do that later, but we'll get some, uh, some data to see if we're in an uptrend or, or a downtrend. So what I do is I take the three values of high, lows, and closes, and I'll multiply the current one by three. It's more of like doing a front-weighted average. The previous levels, I'll, I want their prices doubled and then single for the turn before. There we go. So we'll just copy and paste this a few times. So what I'm going to ask the question is, is this number here greater than the previous number? Because if it is, it's in an uptrend. So therefore, if it's in an uptrend, I'm going to want the high price. So, and then if, I, if it's not up greater, then it's in a downtrend, I'm going to want the lower price. So it's in an uptrend, 49.29 will be selected. So we'll just pick a few more above here and copy and paste this as well. And we'll copy and paste this pretty much all the way down. And what we'll do is we'll bring up a chart after this and see how the average running price is working and what you need to use within it to see if that move is a failed move or not. So we're still waiting, of course, for all the data to pace. So it might take a few more seconds. Shouldn't be too, too much longer, but it still hasn't done it yet. And then we'll stick in a little chart. And it's taking a lot longer than I would have expected. There we go. So we'll create a chart. We'll make it a line chart. So there we have it. So now what we got is we have a blue line which will be price action and a lower orange line which will be the running average since the highs in uh, 2011. I'm just going to fix this up a little bit so that the numbers are on the right hand side and then we'll fix it up later to put it on a log scale. So this is how it started off. We'll increase some days now just to see how the whole thing started off. And what occurred in here is it got above this level before the big breakdown occurred. There was a lot of good reasons stating breaking above this, this thing was going to majorly explode, 20-30% gains, of course that did not take place, and then it went below the running average. So we'll add some uh, more periods, maybe add another 300 hours, and now we'll adjust the scaling now. So the low was 26, the high was 50, so we'll go 52, and I use, use small numbers when it's logarithmic for the interval. There we have it. And just to do a, show how the whole thing has went into play, you get above it on, in uh, 2011. And that was when it was 44, and it didn't hold at the end of September. The January resistance hit it, but then it fell back down. Now, currently, we're back above the volume weighted, or not the volume weighted average price, but the running average price. The volume weighted average price would be very similar as well. 
And now that it's above it, what you need to do is you need to see this average flatten out, which is where it's at, and start to rise. So the starting to rise stage has not taken place, but any movements that bring us above 38, 39, 40 will be really looking good for this uh, market to be ready to resume the bull market once again. So that will be it for today. And have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.